Today we're joined by Mick, the one product store king, and today we talk about how he went from washing dishes to making multiple seven figures with a one product dropshipping store, the e-commerce scene in Germany, opening a company in Dubai and why it wasn't a good move for him, and the systems he uses to get 400 creatives for his products. So let's get right into the episode. Welcome to the next episode of e-commerce Summary Talk by Agency GR. Uh, today we're joined by Mick Dietrich, the One Product King. Uh, he scaled and consistently made the One Product dropshipping store in Germany to over seven figures. So, hey Mick. Um, so, yeah, how are you doing? Thank you, thank you for being here. I'm good. How are you doing, guys? Good, good. It's a sunny day over here in Latvia. Uh, amazing day. Uh, but yeah, maybe to start off, you could give a quick intro to our listeners. Who are you? Where you're from? What you're doing? And then we can dive into the main topics of the podcast. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm Mick Dietrichs. I'm from Germany, half Latvian, like Rainis. So very funny. <laughs> like Jacob like, as no, well. No, Rainis are uh, full Latvian, right? Yeah. yeah but, but I'm half. My mother is coming from a Germ- uh, German father. Uh, I'm living in, in Germany, Hamburg. And yeah, I just started five years ago with, with Amazon FBA, with my own brand, with wallets for men's. And that I did for two and a half years. And then I decided to go with dropshipping, like now almost two and a half, three years about that. And yeah, that's, that's who I am, what I did. And before I did like crazy shitty jobs, like as a waiter, as a, a, a pizzeria, no pizza bakery and like all shitty jobs and a salesman and, and all that stuff like six and 12 months in a row and that that's what i did like from year 16 as i was 16 after the school until 22 and also delivering food for people worked a lot and then started my own businesses Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe you can uh, take everything from, from the start. So you mentioned basically the start, you finished school, you went through a lot of like regular jobs, pizza delivery boy and so on. Like, was this the reason why you wanted to get into business or did you always have like a thing for being independent and having business or like, was this like the main motivation to get away from the regular nine to five or like how did the journey start for you? Yeah, the journey was I want always in my life to be different offer also from different people to be the unique different type and also from yeah like usual people like the usual nine to five and all that stuff and it was a habit it started with a habit that i just checked every day and night in youtube what kind of things you can give your mind to grow and then it starts one by one you can get some more content of entrepreneurship and all that stuff and that was how i found amazon fba and i I, and i thought in this five years five and a half years ago i thought this was the perfect business (laughs) in this time but now i know okay it's a lot of fees going away but that's how how it started all um there, there was this drive and this hunger the hungriness for more in life also, if I had this regular jobs and I just had like 1,500 in net per month, I wanted more. I wanted the most hours, like 200 hours in month to work and to get the most money and then have more fun, of course, and all that other stuff. And that's the same now for my businesses, like also on Amazon FBA uh, back in the days. And there was like, Um, very soon I had like 20, 30 and 50 K revenue per month with this wallets because I launched a lot of wallets and go all in and take like credit of 10 K, 20 K also from my grandma, from France and all that stuff. It was very funny. And yeah. And then, uh, I saw the potential of dropshipping because Yassin, you know, Yassin Baum, um, Naples, Tony, he had like the dropshipping store for himself, um, like 400 to 700 profit per day. And I was sick, man. You have very fast payouts with Shopify instead of Amazon paying out every two weeks. And that was insane. And then I started full focus on that. I remember that day because I wrote it in my journaling. It was 27th September of 219. So almost like, yeah, two and a half years, I guess. And yeah, that's how the journey began. 
and mm -hmm. yeah sounds good like so basically like your first attachment to e-commerce was like you you saw your friends doing good numbers in e-commerce you wanted to switch from amazon over to e-commerce okay and how was like your first experience yourself in e-commerce stepping the first foot into e-com did you start in the german market english market how did it go when did you get the traction it was with the German market, German, um, Austria and Switzerland. We call it uh, Dach in German. Yeah. Dach is like, like from, from the house, the, the yeah. bottom thing. How, how is it in English? The roof, no? The roof, yes. It's like Dach in German and it's like Germany, Austria and Switzerland. And because they all speak German and it worked. It worked very well after some months because we worked a lot, like full hustling, Yasin and me. We started in a WeWork and worked every day, every day. Our vision was to make like 20, 30K profit in a month, every month. And after like two months about, wait, October, November, yes, December. On December, I got my first winner. It was... Um, uh, blown up hair dryer so it's like a comp and like an hair dryer in one two in one like this typical pink black thing i think i, I think i know what you're talking about like one of our clients <laughs> was running the same product that, uh, yes yeah. and i sold that for like two months and it was my first very big winner i had like 50k in profit 40, 40 45 profit per month in this two months, I got like 90K in profit. And I was just, yeah, it was insane. And then in, in January, I realized that only for December, the first 50K month, I paid so much on taxes. So I tried to move out to Dubai. I sell everything in Hamburg, like all my stuff I have in my private Instagram account. It's very crazy. I have a giveaway party like I have eight friends with me and I tell, okay, who wants this? I like, who wants this, this, uh, Ruffy figure. Okay. Who wants this? I tell a number one to 10, every, everybody says six, seven, eight, whatever. And he's winning the dragon balls. He's winning the shoes. He's winning the, this and this and this. And so I, I just got two luggages for Dubai and my laptop, my money making machine and sell my car and all that stuff. Um, moved out from Germany, everything is, uh, yeah, offline in Germany. And then I tried to make the company run in, 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 in UAE, in, in Dubai. But then I realized it was like beginning of 2020 that all my clients is coming from Klarna, pay later, and it doesn't work with Dubai so well. So I had struggles with like three months, four months not setting up so good the business bank account. It was not so good set up with the guy who made it for me. I paid a lot of money, like 20K there and the Dubai typical high life dropshipping life, like business class and rig sauce for one month and all that stuff. It was very nice. I don't re regret it any of these things, but yeah, it's the typical dropshipping lifestyle, uh, which I lived for money was not mine because it was cash flow. And yeah, then I fall back in the ground, back to Hamburg, hustled again, did the things what worked for me and paying taxes like a brave sheep. And then uh, like a good German citizen. <laughs> yes, like a good fucking German citizen <laughs> was paying the streets off, but the streets still need like months to, to build them. <laughs> yeah, but um, then I not. I, I, I was not learned all of my mistakes for this bad quality because I had like 90k in profit with this hairstyler in two months, but then um, the, re the refunds kicked in and I all take the refunds because I'm in German and the typical German citizen take all the refunds and because of bad karma and all that shit. And so my profits from 90k was only like 20k. And like 20K was already opening the company and business class and all that stuff. So, you know, it was minus. Um, so at that point, did you actually have to go in debt or did you manage to get the ball rolling again? You paid that. I, I, I did. Yeah, out. good question. I, I, I did manage the, the, the things, but I was in debt for my customers. 
Mm. So it was not the 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 government or something. So that w- will be big problems. But it was with my customers and Shopify. I had like in the, in the middle of 2020, I had like 25k in minus <laughs> by by Shopify. <laughs> and then my new uh, winning store, my one product store, they they shut it down, and it had pay your money, your minus. And hey, fuck, I have like now one one point five k to two k profit per day with this new store. I need to pay it, so I paid it, and then everything was fine with Shopify payments and me. And my karma was finished, was good. <laughs> but yeah, and um, I I was not I was not learned immediately of these mistakes with these refunds and this bad quality because this is the most powerful learning I had to really dropship good quality products so the refund is not kicking in too much also the paper struggles and the Klarna struggles and um, i was not learning it immediately so i still uh, sell it some shitty products beginning of 2020 for some months to get out of this minus yeah but then in like july august i started selling a very very good product uh, this is my one product store now like selling 18 months in a row with one product, 2 million in sales revenue, like about 400k profit and already paid the taxes. If also not paid the taxes, like the, the VAT, I mean, right? Mm-hmm. Because in Germany, you have the VAT, like from the revenue, it's like 19%. If I wouldn't pay it, it was like 700k in profit for this, this wow. time. But um, you also have the 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 rev no the VAT revenue uh, profit tax no I mean the, the tax yeah profit tax that's what I what I want the profit tax like from this 400k you also pay the highest uh, taxes from your profit is 40 percent so it's almost half again drop it so from 700 to 400 and from the 400 also almost the, the half so from 700 you can imagine like 200 if you have like tax-free the comp- comparison to tax-free um that's yeah. that's the reason why a lot of german entrepreneurs move out of germany but uh it's good it's uh definitely basically from what i'm getting from you is that like your main learning along the way when starting out is basically this product quality matters uh but were like are there any other like mistakes small or bigger ones that you learned while starting out before transitioning to your new strategy or like what was that the main the the main strategy for the success for this one product so you mean right yeah or like also like the biggest other problems other things you learn along the way the the biggest learnings from this all this way is uh, of course the quality have the best quality as possible also for dropshipper it is possible for example you order like from five different suppliers and tell you want the best quality and you really like a parent you 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 raise this uh, suppliers and tell them what you need because german need best quality like mercedes audi bmw okay like you need the almost best quality to succeed in the market long long term or you will get a feedback score negative fit, feedback score you cannot advertise anymore also with paypal struggles and all that shit. so this is the most powerful and of course the marketing need to fit so um, the long-term selling learning from my one product store is really get awesome creatives I tested over 400 creatives almost for this one product store. In the beginning, I was testing like over a period of six to eight months by myself, shoot it all the content, cut it and all that stuff and uploaded it until I made a lot of winning creatives by myself to learn this skill and then delegate it. Only yeah. delegate it after that step. Uh, so you can teach what you know is your winning creatives and yeah so get all in in one product if you already see very good potential like 20 30 50 sales per day for example and now you have like one or two creatives making the sales right so why you don't go in and create new winning creatives with double your revenue Hope you've been enjoying the podcast so far. Here's a word from our sponsor, Ourselves. We'll audit your email and SMS marketing to see if and how it can be improved for free. Simply go to agencyjr.com call. 
That's agency J as in Jacob, R as in Rainus, dot com slash call. And let's talk and see how we can make you more money. Interesting question to kind of touch upon this point, like one product of dropshipping, like one of our clients, uh, I saw them somewhere mentioned that in dropshipping, you can practically sell any product. It just depends like how much work you put into, like how, how good that you create is you can find like new angles and so on. Would you say that is true or you still need to find like the winning product and just build upon that? Or, or do you think you can practically sell any products? Both. I, I mean, both. Of course, both, because you can try to make this umbrella sell as a winner, but you know, umbrella is finding everywhere, like in every store and uh, every corner, like a typical umbrella. But if you have like the typical new uh, problem solving umbrella, very special and new, and you can't found it any, any, anywhere, it's a good sign because you need, we all need to understand that on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok, no matter who, where, um, we just scroll and, and check what friends do and, and how the, this platforms works. It's not, they're not like Amazon or Google. These are really selling platforms and this platform is more like, that's why new and special and wow products working so well instead of like normal products, but an umbrella, for example, works insane on Amazon. If you check the sales, a normal mm. umbrella, insane. Yeah. Yeah. A normal wallet insane on on amazon and also on google but try to sell an umbrella or wallet on facebook instagram pinterest <laughs> man you're getting poor no sales yeah 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 and so of course the winning winning criteria of a product is great but this in combination i i call it the free holy kings all all the time in, in my with my clients on IG, and all that stuff. On IG as well is how it's like yeah, yeah on ig goals. as well like yeah. the tro three holy kings like creatives copies and product so you need to be the best in the product research the best in the creative game and the best in the copy game so it means if one of these holy kings falls down the whole kingdom will fall for long term i mean of course you can make a little bit of revenue if it's an insane product and a little bit good copies a little bit good creators but how every creative will burn out like if i had only one creative for one by, by my one product store i would only have like 400 to 500k in revenue and then yeah. i could tell yo this product is dead man <laughs> yeah, yeah for sure <laughs> but i had this uh, this this three holy kings so everything rolled down and a process for the systems. Yeah, that, that makes a ton of sense. Uh, we were recently in Dubai uh, at Geekout, and one quote that really stood out to me was, if you can't scale, you just have a lack of creatives. Like your competitors are selling more than you because they test more creatives than you think they are testing. Uh, like you might be, you might not be creative enough to figure out a different angle you can test. They might be testing uh, a new angle you didn't even think of, <clears throat> which is allowing them to scale further. So, as content is very important, both on, you know, copy, you know, your, your product's important as well, but specifically regarding content, maybe what's your system, what's your process firstly for, you know, creating creatives for social media and later, you know, for copy, do you have a specific team? If so, like, you know, what's your team structure? Maybe can you run us through your creative creation process? Yeah, of course. So it was very easy for, just one one second ago for for the, for the product thing to to close this thing for for example for beginners in drop shipping for example or e-commerce uh, it's more easy to sell very nice products with all the criteria of problem solving wow and and new and all that stuff but for advanced e-commerce outside here and uh, dropshipper of course they can go on more saturated products and also more boring products and not the typical dropshipping criterias and they also can uh, make it profitable in long term but they need like just how you say it uh, have a very very good copy game and creative game and that's not for beginners uh, as as recommendation from from my side but for for the creative systems what i did for example what i also can recommend for beginners but also for advanced dropshipper but also for online marketer and and e-commerce in general because it's the same system because dropshipping is only the the the, the shipping method yeah, yeah the shipping method so it means the online marketing is still getting cold audience to buy 
and be profitable even after fucking taxes, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so um, that's a very hard skill in Germany to, to train this. I mean, if you have like no VAT, it's more easy, but that's another uh, topic. But for this creatives systems, for example, how I did it in this case, it was very good to see what the market has for my, for, of course, my, my, um, how does it call in English? My Maybe you can say the German. Competitive, German competitive, competitive. For my competitive, I just checked, analyzed what they got, of course. Also, their solutions. If I don't find the same product, I check, okay, what is the solution of my product? I check to search for the solution in creatives and ads by YouTube, TikTok and all this stuff and check what, what of kind of video material do I have now here? But also what can I do uh, different, but also the same as already working. So I have like my winning creative who's performing well and I start to analyze it. What is the, what is the things, why it works so well and just copy the same, but with own models, with own product and with different locations and all this stuff. So you, you just check out in the, in the total video, what does this video show? Like, is there a model? Is there a product? Which kind of location? Do I just see feet or just see hands? Do I just see a kitchen or all that stuff? What can I change of all that stuff? And that's what I changed a lot. Like the models, the product, the outfit and the location. That was my big things what I can change for the video. And that made the most change. And then I just showed the product every time. Sometimes the product uh, throwing into the camera and all that stuff or uh, snipping. And then the product is there and the, the bad product is away. For example, you can do it with everything almost. So some creative shit, but also copy myself with winning creatives and do it just as a little bit different with different components, how right. it was like, yeah. So, so basically you kind of like, when you find a creative that sticks, whether that's from you or your competitor, you try to figure out what are the different components from it, like models, et cetera, et cetera. And then you try to swap these variables out to see, for example, if let's say we, we change a model from, uh, let's say a blonde and a red dress, let's say a brunette, brunette and a dark dress, like would that maybe catch less attention, more attention, uh, and then try to figure out what's really made the ad work. Gotcha, makes sense. Exactly, exactly. And for every product, you have different uh, vari variables and components yeah. to 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 yeah to change. Sometimes you have like shoes. So it doesn't make any change if you have different girls, but for the feet, of course, you can uh, uh, play with the nail uh, leg. You know what I mean? The the red or green for the nails. The, the mm -hmm. nail yeah, yeah, the uh, nail polish. Yeah, nail polish, exactly. This, and, this brings me to a quick question. I'm confused. Like in which, oh, you don't have to reveal the product. In which niche was the product in? If you're talking about like nails, feet and so on. Like a beauty product or... You mean my one product store? Yeah. Yeah, it's almost also that. So I can tell it. It's like um, a handbag for, for women, a clutch. It's like okay. a, this, this, this wallet and bag in one, like two in one. And yeah, that was the component. I change it all the time. Uh, I can reveal it, this product, because it's almost dead because of one thing, because like two, no, 12, 13 months, it sold very good, like 100 to 200 K, K every month in revenue with all my creative systems. And then I started uh, coaching. And you can very easily found uh, in Germany in, in, in this market, found the products. If you type in Mick Dietrich's Impressum in Germany, it means like the, yeah, the company name basically hmm? company, company name. Yeah. The, this word Impressum means like you can just found the, 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 the store of them because everyone needs to do it in Germany, this Impressum thing. And there's your company details on the, the shopping site. And then you can found it. So already I started this coaching and I knew that my product now there will come a lot of little goldfishes who wants to be sharks and they steal it. Is. So I, I knew it, but now I take it as a lead magnet and show them the people how it works and how good it works. And it still worked very, a lot of months still after so much 
so much competitors coming but yeah of course it died now after uh, before some months and That's now i'm just full focus like like eight full months coaching. full focus on my consulting on my coaching and just producing there a lot of um a lot of results people who have good results yeah yeah Yeah, maybe just before we move to the next one, I think that's a good tactic to kind of like find competitors in, in Germany. You see, you see one product store, you see something like that, you can go to the privacy policy, figure out their company name and whatnot, and just yeah. look that up and just see yeah. everything they're doing. But there's also a trick to uh, install a code so you cannot found your store even if you have the name. But I, I knew this code too late, so... Yeah, and also Google had ranked some pictures with my store, so yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like what was interesting to me, uh, like we we are working with a lot of European clients, dropshippers brands, and also in the states. Uh, what we see in Europe, for the most part, I'd say 90% percent of the dropshippers are doing the usual dropshipping model, just general stores testing a shit ton of products every day, and uh, every, every day is a different product. Uh, in the states, it's basically something closer to what you're doing. You have a product. One product store, it's more or less branded. Uh, of course, it depends how much effort they put into creatives, but it's uh, fun seeing that this tactic is applied in Europe and it's working well. Uh, which brings me to the question, like for your students, since right now you're more focused on coaching, do you make them use the same system you're using, like one product and more consistent testing, or do you also make them start out with like general dropshipping strategies or how does that usually go? a mm, little bit different as than uh, usual dropshipping coaches teaches it but still that was working very good for me is like and also for my clients it's like they built a general store but it looks like a very very good one product store for clients and that's the game changer because um yeah they can test every product like a posture corrector a blackhead remover and all that stuff on this general store but it looks like a one product store is very insane And then they can test it. And if it works well, like 10, 20 sales per day, then we go all in. And then we can still make some, like one product store and all that stuff. But the most, uh, the, the best part is to, to make it very efficient. So to save time and just test a lot of good products, but still better than all the other comp competition, like with four to six video creatives different Uh, every first 15 seconds is different than the other video creative so you have different results in your ads manager and also like with picture creatives like four to six and so you're already testing a lot better than a lot of uh, competitors in the dropshipping market and also going deeper in the creatives in the copies to really figure out what is the pain points what's the benefits of this product and not talk about the technical shitty stuff so with creatives are you typically creating your own custom creatives or are you borrowing off the internet both both so for the beginning most of the time borrowing <laughs> and uh, but also sometimes you see products are unsaturated and sometimes a little uh, easy to do the, the content by yourself so also that sometimes but not I, I don't recommend it to beginners because you need this special golden hand for figure out how can i communicate this very good in a creative and if you're not so into this market smoothly then it's experience, more yeah. different yeah experience it yes mm -hmm. i mean right, right now since it, you're kind of more focused on coaching i guess well, it's 90 coaching maybe 10 percent e-commerce like what was the uh, 100 120 100. <laughs> even, even even better like what what's the reason for this switch do you get tired of dropshipping e-commerce or like what's the reason for this pivot or do you still don't plan on getting back into e-commerce like how does that look yeah, it's a good question it was like already one year before i was a little bit bored of of e-commerce yes it was good profits and all that stuff but i had like more opportunities like what do do, do i do now I, i want a bigger vision like not the vision to help any people of this world because I'm still a fucking dropshipping coach or still a dropshipper but of course let's see what in 10 years happen but um, for now the like, next two or five years what is what is my vision for my for my yeah for myself and then 
I have like more opportunities. The one big opportunity was, okay, I do next level drop shipping, do like full time hire people with myself and I tell them everything. And so we go to like 300, 500K per month, maybe 1 million a month with revenue, with drop shipping. Or I go all in with this clutch, make it like a blue tick and all that stuff going into TV and all that stuff and make this brand big with like drops and all that stuff and do branded drop shipping with this or also brand by yourself by themselves by this product or doing like coaching or agency i had so much opportunities and the most thing where i lead it to was like coaching because i was all the time in my life like the big brother role i love it if i i am the big brother for example and also i like to motivate people and also kick their ass off to tell them what they need to do so and they do it and then they have better results and are they are very appreciated for me so i like to be like a, a leader a boss and all that stuff and get the appreciation in life even if it's in zoom it's still for me life um then compare it to e-commerce because on e-commerce i do like 200k in revenue 50k in profit and that's the only the only thankful thing you get in this business because the other thing the dark side is the all the emails all the shit storm and there's especially in germany there's not like 100 200 people writing you yeah i love you this product is nice but in in the coaching for example of course you have not 100 percent um success rate but you have a lot more uh gratefulness uh yeah thankfulness it's, it's it's a lot more fulfilling for you right now yeah it's, it's a lot more fulfilling for me of course yes also you have also the dark sides of coaching like people who are not uh willing to do anything and give you the 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 bad and tell you it's all your fault for example you know what i mean like they, they they tell everything is on your side but you tell them yo the method is working for everyone also for you if you want but you're just a dumb head or something <laughs> But yeah, you also have the dark sides in coaching. But um, until now, I know the dark sides from dropshipping, from coaching, from Amazon FBA. And I still love coaching the most because I already do it nine months now. And uh, it's very nice. I love it. I have big visions to to clean the market a little bit in, in, in the German market because there are a lot of scam coaches also in US, also in other countries. I think it's in dropshipping all the same. And, and my theory for this is why why this is like that because there's a lot of short-term drop shippers and then they're starting short-term coaching so they don't think after like one or two years burn my name and all that stuff because uh, that's the most afraid I, I i will be of to burn my name so that i cannot look into into the mirror and say i'm still mcdietrichs and i'm proud of myself and nobody I, I nobody fucked up and nobody scam it and also I produce a lot of results and my things what I teach works for me and all the other people if they want to. Yeah, and yeah. so that's the reason why I, I, I choose for that. And let's see. I, I committed now for minimum of two years, three years, let's see. And maybe it's grown and um evolved to another thing. Uh, sure. Like it's uh, like this is not the first time for us hearing like drop like the main issue for dropshipping is being like the short term uh, mindset, basically looking at your short term profits. You're making money. You're happy. If you're not making money, you're you're sad. Essentially, with our uh, florist in our last episode episode said as well. But uh, what what I'm personally curious is that I've seen a lot of people try to transition from e-commerce over to agencies, and the agency owners trying to. Co- uh, convert from agency space or e-commerce space those are also even coaching obviously those are very very different business models from one another so like what how was the transition for you like how did you adapt to the new business model was it rocky at first or was it like very smooth sailing from the get-go for you very smooth because i also get a high uh, coaching from the, the the german people they call it baulix they are very big in this game and they teach coaches how to coach and also agencies. They're the biggest uh, people in, in the market. And um, yeah, I paid a lot of money to them. And then I, they showed me like every step, what you need to do, how to sell with a script and all that stuff. 
because they already grown some dropshipping coaches to like 200 300k per month so they know what they do and they have the most results in the market in the german market and uh, yeah so it was very easy for me the first months to get sales to get clients to get results also because of my of my character i i motivate the people and tell them what to do everything like one by one and then um yeah i get more results with my, my clients and that's what i proud of so i know for myself for my ego i don't need any more results in drop shipping to show people what they can what they can do to get the first 100k per month or 200k per month for example it must be, must be very fulfilling um yeah like at the moment like how many how many students do you have i'm curious like now how uh, how much i fulfill every week like about 15 about 15 17 and something like that i don't know it exactly mm -hmm, mm -hmm, not so much mm -hmm. i'm still good. in the beginning still in the growth it's like nine months no, I, but i need to tell, tell this um i didn't start it uh, with ads until now no ads it's all like poor profit from every revenue and also um the first like six months i didn't even ha had a website and already had like 20 clients close it so yeah that's what my mentors also tell me it, it, it's not necessary in the beginning very funny mm -hmm. for sure for sure like say, same thing for us it's more just about connecting with people uh making sure reputation stays on point and all of that um yeah my rain is maybe something you want to jump in with um not that much i i, I think i have some some uh uh I may have some interesting information from Mick after the uh, <clears throat> after after the podcast uh, about kind of like yeah info products what we've seen, um, but other than that, uh, I don't think so. I think the creative stuff was what was, was good. Um, we covered a lot of great topics. I don't think there's anything else from me. Mick, for you, what have what do you see that have been your top three biggest mistakes, which brought you the biggest lessons in the past five years? My first mistake from the last five years, biggest lesson is too late started with a good mindset develop development to start like more in depth, go into mindset because all, all the results is depending on your mindset because like everything you think will start to get like in a, in an action and this action will get to in a routine, this a routine to an, to an, an reward outcome yes and then you get like a, yeah destiny to a character your life and then it starts again with the uh, thinking so it's all like a circle so mindset development basically right yes yes right the the second point is uh, to focus only on one only one uh, business for example yeah now with my with my coaching i only focus on coaching and will produce the much results for my clients not also focus like 50% on drop shipping to also get own uh, results. I don't need that. Also not with my workers. We only have one focus, one business to grow that. So because one life still is not enough to make one very good e-commerce company because you need like 100 lives if you want a very, very big company, like a lot of workers. And also like you can give your son this company and this son and this son and this son, and then it's like Louis Vuitton or anything else or Apple. So it's not like your life is not enough for one business. And you, I'm not a friend of making like two, three business in the same time. But uh, yeah, if you have fun with that and you live, I mean, ex in the end of the life, you need to have fun, of course, also a little bit. So it's not only business, business and grow uh, one business. And the third one is uh, too late, get the best, best coaches for my current situation. It was also the best choices I made and the, the biggest mistake too late, make it. So uh, get the best coaches for my current situation with, with which biggest goals I have for relationship, for business, for my fitness goals, whatever, get the best if I don't know how, I just ask myself who. So if I don't know how to get the best shape of my life, I ask who, who got this best shape of his life and how can he teach me? 
did he all already produce some results for his clients or anything else and also with coaches and also with agencies and all that stuff so you can validate very easily and not trap into scam coaches or anything else so your self fault if you <laughs> dropped into scam coaches because you didn't ask good questions For sure. Speaking of the best coaches, Mike, where can our podcast listeners find you or what, which platform that's your name and where can they schedule in a call with you? Yeah, I think the target group here is very less German people uh, hearing this podcast, but because, because I just uh, coaching German people in German, not in English. So for everyone who's hearing this and like my voice and like my vibe, um, yeah, you can check out Instagram, McDietrix. You can check out my YouTube and podcast as well, but it's all in German. So if you like to, to hear German and still don't understand, yeah, go for it. But um, yeah. I'm sure Or, there will be at least some German listeners. Yeah. I'm sure. Or you can learn German. Yeah. <laughs> if that's the one thing, yeah, you can try. <laughs> <laughs> all right. On that note, uh, I want to thank you, Mick, for being in the podcast. It's been a great episode. So thank you for the value drops and everybody listening. Go check him out. Definitely a valuable follow. So thank you. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. If you thought this episode was valuable, share it with a friend that may find this useful and leave a five-star review so we can reach more influential people and bring the lessons back to you. See you in the next episode.